Good morning. It's your crazy old coo here. How you doing? I'm doing great. My R5 2600X arrived a day early, so we're ready to roll. What I'm showing you here right now is I'm baselining the uh, R5 1600, and it's at 3.85 gigahertz with 2933 memory. And I'm at 1.34 volts, okay? And this is on the Gigabyte AB350 Gaming 3. So basically, it's just showing, because we're not really interested in score. We're interested in in um, wattage and in temperatures and in CPU speed, see how much it drifts. So now we're into the actual test. This is the actual score for the 1600. 1285 2600x clocked at the same speed okay basically all i did was i took out the 1600 dropped in the 2600x everything else is the same and this is what i got for scores and i got a 1314 which is a 2.25 uh, percent increase the next screen here is the 2600x in auto so this is just it not locked at 3.85 like the last one was but this is do what you do and i got a score of 1370 which is about a 6.6 percent increase over the 1600 overclocked so now we got single bench scores so it's the 1600 is at 157 the 2600X is at 161, and the uh, 2600X doing its thing. Oh, yeah, 173. So basically, we're talking 1600 and the 2600X at the same frequencies. We've got about a 2.25% increase. Now, the 1600 overclocked versus the 2600X in auto is about a 10% boost in single core. So that's pretty good. Now we're going to go into fire strike scores. We're only looking at the physics scores. 17,121, 2600X at the same speeds, and we get a 17,729. And then we get to the 2600X to do its own thing and we get 18,330. The difference between the 1600 overclocked and the 2600 at the same clocks is about 3.5%. The uh, 1600 overclock versus the 2600X doing its thing and we get about a 7% increase. So now we're going to go to Time Spy. So we've got, we're looking at CPU scores and we got 6,189 and then we got 6,359 and then we get 6,549. So that gives us a 2.8% difference between the 1600 overclocked and the 2600X clocked at the same speed, a 5.8% increase for the 2600X in auto versus the 1600 overclocked. Now I just threw these in. Basically, I don't like gaming because you can fudge it with settings and resolutions and whatever. So basically, there is no difference between these two in gaming. So I did Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark and I also went back and did an old one, Crises. In Crisis, I didn't even bother putting the 2600X in auto. It, it doesn't mean anything because all th three of these settings can drive my RX 480 to the max, which is all you care about. For gaming, all you need to know is, can my CPU drive my GPU to 100%? As long as it can do that, it doesn't matter what CPU you have. The Intel 8700K... Is supposed to be the king of the gaming CPU. Yeah, it is. If you've got a high refresh monitor at 1080p, even then, if you put them side by side, you're probably not going to tell the difference in a blind test. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference 
because modern CPUs, as long as they can do what they need to do, you're not going to tell the difference. I mean, knock yourself out if you want. Gaming-wise, I think most modern CPUs, as long as they're 6 cores and 12 threads and above, are going to be able to max out just about any GPU. And if you get, go above 1080p, it don't matter because you're going to be GPU limited no matter what. So that's my rant on gaming benchmarks. This is the part where I talk about the death of overclocking. Because with these Ryzen 2000 series CPUs, the Precision Boost 2 and the new XFR, they do it for you. Here I am. Okay, I'm running a multi-threaded Cinebench here. And you're going to see that this does the overclocking for you hammering this CPU pretty hard and it's still hitting 4 gigahertz plus or minus 50 megahertz. We're hitting 140 amps or so. That is just about the max I'd want to do with this motherboard. You know, Linus Tech Ticks did a thing and they 2600X in auto and then they tried to overclock it and they could only get 4.1 gigahertz but that's because they were using the stock cooler and I'm using a high-end cooler. So my temperatures never got hardly above 60 degrees C. The Precision Boost and the XFR2, they're taking all my six cores. They're not taking one or two. They're taking all my six cores to four gigahertz. And this is under heavy load. And this is a B350 board. So this isn't an X370 or an X470. My X470 board is supposed to arrive today. And I expect to get squeeze a little bit more out of but it's not going to be a whole lot. I mean, we're talking 200 megahertz, um, maybe. The Precision Boost and the XFR manage the CPUs so much better than they used to that it's to the point where you're not going to buy much overclocking. And in fact, in order to keep your CPU at 4.2 gigahertz, you know, you're going to have to drive your voltages up to 1.40 or, or 1.45 volts at all times. And that's all times. They're going to be running at speed at all time. They're going to be running the voltages at all time. You're going to degradate your CPU theoretically faster than with the Precision Boost 2 and the XFR2 managing your system because they're only going to push the CPU when it needs to be pushed. This is under heavy load. Now under light load, you would think it would push back the clocks? No. I'm running Cinebench R15 single thread. Look at the clocks. The clocks are pushing 4.1 gigahertz plus or minus 50 megahertz. We're backing off the load because we're only running single thread with Relive yeah, and hardware monitor running, it's actually overclocking faster than under heavy load. And I assume probably part of this was voltage current throttling, power throttling, the CPU under heavy load, so it's had to pull back. Where under a lighter load, it doesn't have to, because we're not pushing the current like we were before. Because we're only running like 50%. Now, in games... The Ryzen CPUs usually only run about 50%. You're going to get your max out of these things when you're playing games without overclocking. Because, I mean, you're talking, you might squeeze out another 50 megahertz, 100 megahertz maybe, but it's not going to be worth it. <laughs> what are you going to get, a frame? So this is why I'm saying we're talking about the death of overclocking because you don't need to. Because it's going to overclock for you. My X470 board should arrive today. And we'll get to see what that does. So this is your crazy old coup. Wishing you a good evening.